<clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chris's Comics Corner, Episode 7. I am, as always, Chris, and this week, I want to talk about Dark Horse Comics. I was originally going to do an episode about Kickstarter and why it matters. I'm pushing that to next week because we got huge news about Dark Horse and what's going on with the Conan the Barbarian franchise. So Marvel in 2019 will be taking over Conan the Barbarian as they did for many years, taking it away from Dark Horse Comics. So I want to discuss this a little bit because this isn't the first time it's happened to Dark Horse and it will not be the last time it happens to Dark Horse. So I want to discuss what does Dark Horse do moving forward from this news. So if y'all don't remember, before Disney bought Lucasfilm and all the subsidiaries that went with Lucasfilm, Dark Horse had the Star Wars license as well. And when that deal went through, uh, Disney and Marvel Comics immediately took over the Star Wars license and now publishes great Star Wars comics. The only negative to the whole thing is what it did to Dark Horse. And Dark Horse has thrived since, but now they're about to lose another huge property in Conan the Barbarian. So, Dark Horse, what do they do moving forward? Well, as it stands right now, Dark Horse still does have a lot of different business practices they use. They have a, a toy line, they do a lot of manga, and that's big business as well. Um, obviously they have Hellboy, which has been their, their star for a long time. Their big name, their original creation that no one's going to be able to take away from them outside of some sort of buyout deal. But losing market with Star Wars and now Conan is going to affect things. So what do they do? Well, personally, this is what I would do if I was Dark Horse, or at least as a fan looking from the outside at Dark Horse. I say you double down on the video game stuff. Do more video game stuff. They had the announcement that they have uh, partnered with Nintendo and they will be doing an ARMS graphic novel series. That's great. I wish it wasn't ARMS. I wish it was something else. But it was great that you at least were able to talk Nintendo into letting an American company do American comics for an American audience. You also have Halo. You have Tomb Raider. You have Mass Effect. These are three huge franchises that all have great stories that could be told. Double down on this stuff. Start talking to other public or other uh, video game companies. Now you saw Sonic moved to IDW. Sonic was a huge uh, property. Something like that. Continue the relationship with Nintendo. Find a way. Let's get Zelda comics. Let's get Super Mario comics. Let's get Splatoon comics. The list goes on and on of what you could do with Nintendo. So you really need to kill it with this arms deal. Now, with that too, Halo, Halo, as much as I do love Halo personally, Halo is a dying franchise. And although I'm sure those books sell well, I think you need to start looking elsewhere. Um, as well as Mass Effect. Mass Effect, kind of a dying franchise. So, what do we do here? We, they need a big sci fi franchise to take. And I don't know where that is, but start scouting around looking for the next big thing. What is it? Where is it coming from? Then you have Hellboy. Hellboy can keep doing what's doing. Hellboy sells great. It's always on, um, you know, the charts show that Hellboy is what it is. And then you have the other part, which I think they also need to double down on. That is creator-owned comics. Now, they have done some... Over the years, Hellboy Star Alpha is one. We've seen others. A big one I'm seeing that I'm loving is Black Hammer. Start getting guys like that to come to Dark Horse and make big, not even superhero, but just whatever, indie comics. That's where I think the future really lies for Dark Horse. Don't try to go full on and be IDW. I love IDW, but IDW is very much... An IP house. Dark Horse can be more. Dark Horse can still do the things they're doing, create new great independent comics, and at the same time, find these great video game franchises and bring them up into the comics realm. Beyond that, is keep doing what you're doing, Dark Horse. I don't think that this is going to kill you, uh, but I do somewhat worry for the future of Dark Horse with all this happening. 
So what more can Dark Horse lose? Now, the next in line, what happens with Predator and Aliens? That's a big question as well. They do put out quite a few Predator and Aliens books. I don't know. We will see. But I do think they need to really kind of put all their chips in in these two spaces where they one where they can't be touched because if you do create your own stuff it's there it's yours there's not a whole lot that people can do to take that away and if you do video game stuff there's not a whole lot of people touching that market right now and there's a lot of people that would jump on that market right now very few come straight to mind to me at this very second but as an avid game player i know that there are quite a few video game franchises i would love to dig deeper into through the world of comics so everybody i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up if you didn't give me a thumbs down comment below let me know you know start a conversation let me know what you're thinking in these videos and uh, remember to visit us at fortresscomicnews.com where you get all of our cool stuff and the podcast posts every week you know subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this uh, the subscriptions really help us out, help us get in the algorithm, and we appreciate all you for it. And if you so are inclined, we have a Patreon at patreon.com slash news That helps us out immensely. I'm not going to go into all of what it helps us out with, but at the end of the day, I'll just tell you it, it makes me feel good knowing that there's people out there willing to help out with what we are doing here. And other than that, as always, keep on enjoying those comics.